You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Judges 13 verse 5 Samson's story is one of the most dramatic and colorful in the Bible. From the miraculous birth through battle with the lion, and three hundred burning foxes, the women he loved, to the betrayals he endured from all the women in his life to his heroic suicide, which saw him collapse the temple of Dagon on his head, killing thousands of Philistines. In the biblical story, Samson was the twelfth judge of Israel and the last one described in the book of Judges from the tribe of Dan. Samson grew up as a monk of God, and as long as his monasticism was preserved, God blessed him with supernatural power, which he used to strike the Philistines, who ruled the southern part of the land of Israel during his leadership. An angel of God appeared to Samson's barren father and mother and told them that a son was about to be born, who would grow up to be a servant of God. He was forbidden to shave his hair, drink wine or liquor, and he would save the people of Israel from the Philistines. The angel commanded his parents to follow the custom of nuns even before he was born. And when Samson reached the greatness of God, his spirit began to pulsate in him. Samson, a model of heroism and strength in Judaism, was known by his popular nickname, Samson the Hero. In Christianity, Samson symbolizes the virtue of heroism, one of the seven Christian virtues, which is sometimes drawn from the sources of Samson. The story of Samson's plots also recognizes three loves that he had, all three with Philistine women. The first was a Philistine woman from Timnah, and Samson asked permission from his parents to marry her. His parents dissuaded him from marrying her. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Judges 14 verse 3 However, Samson did not hesitate and eventually married a woman. The story of Samson's marriage to his first wife is brief and does not offer much detail about their relationship. From the moment Samson asked his parents' permission to marry the girl, nothing is explicitly written about what happened next, except as a side note during the story of Samson killing the lion and taking honey from its carcass. With strange and unclear timing, Samson killed the lion, and it didn't take much time to turn the lion's carcass into a beehive. Samson then took the honey in his hand and brought it to his parents. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it. Judges 14 verse 9 After this deed, Samson abandoned his wife in anger and returned to his father's house. After a while, Samson wanted to return to his wife, but he discovered that her father had given her to someone else. To get revenge, Samson captured three hundred foxes, tied torches to their tails, and sent them to the fields of his wife's father, burning all their crops. The Philistines, wanting revenge, went out with a large force to capture Samson. To avoid war, 3,000 people from the tribe of Judah went to deliver Samson to the Philistines. After they promised him they would not harm him, but only hand him over to the Philistines, Samson allowed them to bind him. After he was handed over to the Philistines, the chains melted from his hands, and he found a donkey's cheek and struck a thousand Philistines with it. The Philistines searched and consulted among themselves extensively on how to overthrow Samson, eventually concluding that the best way to do so was through the women in his life. They said to Samson's wife, Coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to steal our property? Judges 14 verse 15 As mentioned, this is what the Philistines did with the first wife. They did not relent, 
realizing that only the women could solve the riddle. The second woman was a Philistine prostitute from Gaza. When the Philistines found out that Samson was in her house, they came to capture him. However, Samson escaped from her house in the middle of the night and ran away from the city. He broke the city gates from their place and carried them to the top of the mountain on the outskirts of Hebron. The third and last one is Delilah. Again, as with the previous stories, despite the enmity between Samson and the Philistines, Samson quickly fell in love with Delilah. He fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Judges 16 verse 4 The Philistine intelligence officers, who were afraid of Samson's great power and his actions against them, came to Delilah and begged her to seduce Samson so that he would reveal the secret of his power. They offered her 1,100 silver pieces in exchange for spying on him. See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Judges 16 verse 5 Delilah sells herself for money and intelligence information, which is very important to the Palestinian military leadership. Samson falls into her trap and reveals his secret. The hair on his head was not shaved, an expression of his divinely ordained status as a nun. Samson discovered his strength and secret due to Delilah's deception, and without much wisdom from her, he fell into the trap set by his enemies. Delilah cut off the hairs of his head, and the Philistines gouged out both of his eyes and put him as a prisoner in the prison house. The event between Delilah and Samson is considered fascinating and unusual, as it involves both temptation and betrayal. Samson is the ultimate hero in Jewish mythology, similar to Hercules in Greek and Roman mythology. There are many similarities between the stories of Samson and Hercules, for example. Both had supernatural physical strength, both fought the lion and defeated him with their bare hands and no weapons, and both carried symbols of power on their shoulders. Samson defeated the gates of Gaza and Hercules the lion. Both of them fell due to injuries caused by their wives. This difference expresses the trend of the biblical narrator compared to the trend of the writers of Greek and Roman mythology. Samson was a human being who drew his strength from God and was totally dependent on him for all his heroic deeds. Hercules, on the other hand, was the son of Zeus and drew his power from being a demigod. Samson was an unusual judge compared to other judges. He acted alone as a lone wolf against the Philistines, engaging in personal acts of revenge that were usually associated with his wives. Unlike the other judges in the Bible, Samson's story is not similar, he was not a tribal or national leader, nor did he fight at the head of the Hebrew armies and bring salvation to Israel. Furthermore, there are no elements in his story that are typically required of a judge leader. Despite this, it is said of him twice that he judged Israel for twenty years, and there is not a single word of condemnation for his actions, despite the message hidden in the story. The end of Samson's story involved his three wives, the last of whom, Delilah, seduced and betrayed him, resulting in his eyes being gouged out, leaving him blind. The Philistines celebrated the capture of Samson, following Delilah's betrayal of him, with a great sacrifice held in the temple, attended by the majority of the people. Dagon was their god, to whom they brought Samson, who was blind-eyed and humiliated. Samson asked the boy to place him between the pillars of the building. He started a prayer to God to strengthen him. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, Strengthen me just once more, and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Judges 16 verse 28 He tightly gripped the pillars and called out to God, and the structure collapsed on all the celebrants. 
Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Judges 16 verse 30 Samson's heroic call to bring down the Dagon temple on its occupants and himself was a turning point. Until then, Samson had acted solely for himself and all his legendary acts of heroism had been driven by revenge. Without any tangible value or national achievement, this is a final act of revenge that carries symbolic weight and expresses a person's self-respect, they do not surrender, but are willing to sacrifice themselves. The character of Samson is given more attention than any other judge in the Book of Judges, with the biblical narrator devoting four entire chapters to him and providing a great deal of detail about his life. Starting with a description of his parents before his birth and ending with a detailed description of his death and burial place, this is a complete and fascinating life story. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.